Okay guys, today we are starting Big Idea 3, which says that energy changes the states and interactions of matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what the states of matter are, and then we're going to talk about how um, energy takes um, matter and changes it from one state to another, and then how they interact. So what we're going to start with, though, is just um, essential question one, how do I use the kinetic molecular theory to describe matter's behavior in each state? So we're going to talk about solids, liquids, and gases. We're going to talk about what kinetic molecular theory is, and then what it does to the particles in each of those um, states of matter. So there are four states of matter, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. Um, I typically get the most questions about plasma, so we actually don't spend any time on plasma, but I'm going to show you some pictures so you know what where plasma is found. So plasmas are very, very hot, so we're talking super, super high temperatures. So they are found in flames, lightning, um, the aurora borealis, which is the northern light. The sun is an example of a star in its plasma state. And I love this graphic. This is a graph that shows temperature in Kelvin, which is um, standard SI temperature, or yeah, measurement for temperature, Kelvins, up to the 10 to the 8th power. Really, 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 really hot, right? Okay. And then density is increasing across here. So up here, very super dense, super hot. Um, so the ones I just showed you are on here lightning, flames, your aurora, neon signs, um, fusion reactors, nebulas, those are all examples of plasma, okay? So you don't have to write any of that down, just wanted to kind of give you some information about that, show you some pictures. Here's where I want you to start writing. Okay, states of matter. They are based upon three things. Okay, we use three things to determine whether it's a solid, a liquid, or a gas. So part, uh, states of matter are based upon three things. Particle arrangement, energy of particles, and the distance between the particles. Okay, particle arrangement, energy of the particles, and the distance between them. All right, so let's talk specifically about solids, liquids, and gases. Um, you don't need to write these down. Let's just talk about these really quickly. Just We're just going to say out loud, we're going to classify each of the following as a solid, liquid, or gas. So gold is a solid. solid. Water is a liquid. good. Helium. Gas. Alcohol. Liquid. Salt. Solid. Good. So I just want to make sure that everybody can classify those. Which thought you could, but just wanted to um, be sure. So what we're going to do now is talk about each of these individually, solids, liquids, and gases, what their particle arrangement is like, and um, how we can then apply kinetic molecular theory. So before we do that, I want you to think about this. Why are you able to freely walk in air through some difficulty in liquids and not at all? Through a solid. Right. That's exactly right. Depends on how much space there is between the particles. So in a solid, the particles are extremely close together, like super compact, really close together. When they move, they all move at the same time in the same direction. Liquids, on the other hand, have 
some space in between particles. Not a lot. They're still tightly compacted, but there's just enough space that they can kind of move around each other. Okay? And then in a gas, there's lots of space in between the particles. So think about that. When we walk around the classroom, you're just walking through air, right? Through a gas, lots and lots of space in between the particles. If you go to the swimming pool in the summer, you can walk through the pool, right? With some difficulty, but you can do it. But can you walk, like, through a wall? No. Because the particles are so close together, there's no space for you to go through them. Okay? All right. So let's start with solids. Okay, so write this down for me, please. Particles in a solid are extremely close together, super compact. Particles in a solid are super compact. Um, they vibrate around a fixed point, meaning they all move in the same direction at the same time. So particles are super packed together, very tight. And then I also want you to write that solids have a definite shape and a definite volume. Definite shape and definite volume. Liquids still have particles that are very tightly packed together, but there's enough space that they're able to move around each other, kind of slide over one another. Okay? So the particles are still tightly packed. Remember, you can walk through a swimming pool. You can walk through water. So um, there's just enough space for that. Liquids have an indefinite shape, and what that means is they're gonna, it's going to take the shape of whatever container you put it in, right? If you pour water into a glass, it's going to take the, sh the shape of that glass. If you, you know, pour water into a fishbowl, it's going to take the you know, shape of a fishbowl. So it's indefinite shape, meaning it takes the shape of whatever container it's in, but it does have a definite volume. So you can measure the volume specifically. Indefinite shape, but definite volume.
okay? And gases, the particles are very far apart, move around freely, lots of movement, that's why we can walk through them, okay? And have an indefinite shape and an indefinite, <coughs> excuse me, indefinite volume. we're going to um, write down is we're going to write down a version of the kinetic molecular theory so if you want to go ahead and write in that heading um, I'll have you copy that down next the kinetic molecular theory is in the essential question over there that'll be the next thing last thing that we copy down essential question. How do I use the kinetic molecular theory to describe matter's behavior in each state? So when we talk about solids, liquids, and gases, what you're going to be asked about is what happens to matter in each state when you do certain things to it, okay? We're going to talk about adding or taking away heat with our essential question two. So with essential question one, we're just talking about what happens to those particles. What are the particles doing? Okay, so um, kinetic theory of matter, or the kinetic molecular theory, which is what I told you to write down, is that matter is made up of particles which are in continual random motion. Okay? Matter is made up of particles which are in continual random motion. So what that means, in terms of our essential question, is that with each of the, we just described, what happens in each state of matter with the particles, okay? So in a solid, those particles, yes, are in random motion, they're in continuous motion, but they are very tightly compact together and all move around a fixed point. In liquids, we talked about how the particles are still very close together, but there's just enough room now that they can start to move around each other, okay? And then in gases, we talked about how they are so spread apart and they move freely. Now, the kinetic molecular theory of gases has six postulates that go along with it. Um, a postulate is a um, scientific postulate is a statement that is assumed to be true unless proven otherwise. So instead of you writing down all of these postulates, I'm giving you copies of the next few slides here. Okay, so you can just kind of look over this with me. Um, this is the kinetic molecular theory of gases. So these are specific to gases. There are six postulates 
postulate number one is that a gas consists of very small particles, each of which has a mass. So we talked about those particles that have lots of space in between them and gases, but we know that they do have a mass, even though they're very small and lots of space in between. So for example, an inflated basketball weighs more than a deflated basketball. Okay, so that's postulate number one. Postulate number two, the distance Distances separating gas particles are relatively large. Now, what that means is it's relative, right? These particles are microscopic, like very, very, very small. So in rel relative to their size, there's a lot of space in between. Um, the volume of, a ga of the gas particles is assumed to be zero because it is negligible compared with the total volume in which the gas is contained. So and what it's talking about is whatever you put the gas into, that volume would be a lot bigger than the volume of the particles themselves. You put a tiny tree in between. Okay, number three, gas particles are in constant, rapid, random motion. Gases will fill a container very quickly or diffuse from one to another. This is a good description of how gas molecules behave. So they're in constant motion all around, and they will move from one area to another if there isn't any of that gas in a certain area. Okay, number four, collisions of gas particles with each other or the walls of the container are perfectly elastic. So what that means is, you know, if you take a basketball or a bouncy ball, and if you just drop it, It'll bounce, and then it'll bounce a little lower, and then it'll bounce a little lower, and bounce a little lower. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, if I just hold it up like this here and drop it, it'll bounce, but each time it bounces, it gets lower and lower, right? This means that, they are, that the gas particles, though, are perfectly elastic, so exactly opposite of that. It'd be like me taking a basketball and dropping it, and it bouncing the same height every single time. Okay? So they have that constant energy. Does that, that make sense to everybody? Be like if I, you know, if I dropped it from here, it'd be like the ball would. It's like I would dribble, but wouldn't need to do anything with my hand, right? If I left my hand here and dropped it, it would just keep hitting my hand every time, right? It's like it was dribbling itself. Okay. Okay. Number five: the average kinetic energy of gas particles depends on the temperature of the gas. So what that means is, translation: the higher the temperature, the more energy it's going to have. Okay. The higher the temperature, more energy it's going to have. We're going to talk about kinetic energy in Unit 5, so we will definitely come back to that. And then the last one, gas particles exert no force on one another. Attractive forces between gas particles is assumed to be zero. That means there's no, like, attraction, no magnetism. They're not attracting each other. They are perfectly random, moving around all the time. It has one particle has nothing to do with another. Gas particles do not slow down and condense into a liquid because they exert only a very weak attractive force. Um, and gas molecules do not interact with each other. Depending on the gas, this can be good or bad assumption. Um, H2O vapor has much stronger intermolecular interactions than helium. So it depends on um, what element it is, what you're working with, okay? But it is assumed, attractive force between gas particles is assumed to be zero because it's so, so small, okay?